Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 10. We're starting tonight with new information about what led to an hours-long search and police presence on the north side of West Fargo. One woman is in jail facing a number of charges after what police are calling a road rage incident. West Fargo authorities say they got a call just before 3.30 today about a reckless driver ramming into and following another vehicle. Officers found both cars just south of Hazer's Auto and Truck Parts. Witnesses told police that a female driver suspected in the road rage incident ran north from that area. Police then set up a perimeter and used a canine to track the suspect. 41-year-old April Bergman was found nearby and arrested. She's facing charges of reckless endangerment, criminal mischief, and driving under suspension. West Fargo police say they are still investigating the incident, but don't believe there's any further danger to the public. Rescue crews near Red Lake, Minnesota were not able to find two missing anglers today, but they plan to continue their search efforts tomorrow morning. Today, volunteers search from the air, on land, and in the water to find the two men, a 29-year-old and 17-year-old. They disappeared last night when their boat ran into trouble in icy conditions. According to police, one man jumped out, swam to shore, instructing the other two to stay with the boat. By the time he did reach the shore, the boat had capsized, and the other two men were nowhere to be found. Police are not calling the search a recovery effort yet. They say it's still an open investigation. But they're also saying they're racing against the weather as ice continues to form on the lake. Grand Forks will be raising its sales tax by a half percentage. Voters have approved the move to pay for half of a $150 million water treatment plant and road work. Here are the numbers from today's special election. 73% said yes. 27% said no. The sales tax hike takes effect April 1st of next year. There certainly was plenty of interest, but only one seat available in today's Moorhead School Board race. Thirteen candidates were after the one-year unexpired seat on the board. The seat had been held by Lori Johnson, who resigned late last year, halfway through her four-year term. These aren't finals, but with four of six precincts reporting, Kara Glow has 360 votes, Keith Vaught has uh, 210 currently, and David Marquardt with 102. Now over in Dilworth, Steve Jesme and incumbent Jim Osnes have been elected to the city council. Incumbent Mayor Chad Olson won re-election. He ran unopposed. Now there are several other races on the Minnesota side. We've set up a link to the Secretary of State's office, posted it on our website. So go to valleynewslive.com. It's nice to know it won't be quite as cold tomorrow morning as it was early today. Hutch, anything else happening overnight? Well, we have a clear sky right now and mostly moony conditions, as you saw on the uh, sky cam there just moments ago. And with these clear skies, we are getting some photos in of some northern lights that are quite spectacular out there. So if you're out late tonight away from the city lights, then uh, look up to the north, low on the horizon, a chance of seeing that. Tonight, not as cold as you mentioned, temperatures slipping into the teens, but the wind shifts, becomes northwesterly as a cold front pushes in. Start your day temperatures in the teens above zero as a Opposed to those below zero readings, snow will be developing in the afternoon and will create some slippery travel conditions across the valley. I'll have hour by hour details on how much you can expect and when the sunshine and milder temperatures return here in a few moments. All right, thanks, Hutch. An attempt to bring both sides of the aisle together for the sake of victory. White House officials meeting with some Senate Democrats late this afternoon in hopes of coming to an agreement on tax reform. North Dakota U.S. Senator Heidi Heitkamp was there. She tells Valley News Team's Peter Zampa there's still work to do. It's not there yet. North Dakota Senator Heidi Heitkamp is looking for common ground on tax reform. She and other Senate Democrats met with White House officials Tuesday to figure out a way forward on the issue. Heitkamp says meetings like this show cooperation rather than partisanship. It's a real opportunity to air a lot of concerns and see if we can get to yes on a package that could get potentially 60 votes. She says the House Republican plan is headed in the right direction toward helping the middle class, but she says she's disappointed it gives more breaks to the top 1%. She says she doesn't have enough information on the effects of the child tax credit or the impact on North Dakota farmers. We're going to continue to work through these kinds of issues, looking through it in, in a lens of um, the North Dakota taxpayer. The White House told us there is no reason tax cuts for the middle class and pro-growth reform for businesses should be partisan issues. Members of the administration will continue to engage with Democrats 
many of whom have expressed support for these policies in the past. For Democrats to just outright reject the current effort would be somewhat hypocritical if they truly want to provide uh, relief for American families. Romina Bacha from the Conservative Heritage Foundation says it's smart for senators like Heitkamp to take meetings with the White House. Heitkamp is up for re-election in 2018 in a state that President Trump won by nearly 36 points. And the president needs as many votes as possible to get a significant legislative victory this year. This is a legislative win that the president wants to get and he will work with Democrats or Republicans, whoever he needs to, in order to make tax reform a reality. In Washington, Peter Zampa, Valley News Live. House Republicans say they're hoping to send a final version to the Senate by Thanksgiving. People living in Fergus Falls, Minnesota, are trying to save one of their favorite stores. Devastated by the news that Target is closing there, thousands are signing a petition. It's well over 7,000 people right now. I'm sad about it, terribly, because I love Target. You know, when we lived here a long time ago and they opened Target, I was so excited. It's been here as long as I've been here, and that was a huge um, selling point when we moved here. So <laughs> it's like, yes, and that's a Target. The Target spokesperson says the decision was not made lightly. They have noticed a decrease in profits over several years. It will close the first Saturday in February, along with one other Minnesota store in Hastings. They were already in Fargo, and now Tim McGraw and Faith Hill have extended their Soul to Soul world tour to include Grand Forks. They'll be at the Ralph Engelstead Arena on July 10th. The Ralph is one of 25 new dates that were added to the tour. Tickets for the Grand Forks show will go on sale next Friday, November 17th at 10 in the morning. In this week's restaurant report card, the coffee shop and hotel restaurant in Fargo with critical violations. But first, more details are coming out on the background of the man who killed 26 people at a church in Texas.